You are tuned in to the J Dog and Levis Show. After years of playing together in bands and tons of late night conversations, it was decided that it was only fair we repeat it all here. Tonight on the J Dog and Levis and Levis Show. I'm here. Still here. Still here. I just got back. How can you say I'm still here? He's still here. He never left. Asian Matt was here, but there was still a stain on the chair. I, I just hid under the table. I think we got a couple of things to talk about tonight. I'm really excited to get caught up. I'd like to talk about your trip up north. Okay. That'd be great. Uh, got a couple stories. A couple of stories. A couple of stories. Um, I have a... A phone call or two I'd like to address tonight. Mm-hmm. A couple of new segments involve phone calls. Ooh, new segments. One going out and one that came in. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we found a new drink to drink on the show tonight. Yes. So we'll inform yes, you we did. about that. So it's very important. I, I hope there's an inspirational moment to go with that. There will be an inspirational moment on the yes. show. That's my new favorite segment. So stay tuned right here on the J-Dog and Levis Show for all of your inspiration for everything you do in your life. Oh, oh, oh. 
Well, what'd you think of that one, J-Dog? What I think is... See, you requested it, so be careful how you answer Hold that. Hold on, I'm thinking. It was just All right, like, I have thought. It was just like a couple seconds ago. It was very nice. Thank you. It's very nice to look straight across and see <laughs> Levis again. Levis is back, ladies and gentlemen, in the studio. I'm here. I'm still here. Not that I didn't like looking at Asian Matt. Don't get me wrong. Oh, Asian Matt was here. For a couple minutes. That would explain why it smells like Hello Kitty threw up over here. <laughs> is there still a teriyaki stain on it, the corduroy? This, this yellow is so nasty. Well, chair. I'm afraid to get up from this chair because <laughs> I think my pants will stick and rip off. Kind of like sticking to a leather seat in a Yukon on a hot summer day. Kind of, yeah. The, whatever the Japanese <laughs> version, a a, a, a a Suzuki, a Suzuki, uh, yeah, something or other. A Suzuki. Uh, what was the uh, Suzuki little yeah. four by four? That's what I was not the Geo Tracker. <laughs> I already went over that. <laughs> the Suzuki. What was it? Forerunner or something? I don't know. Oh, it was a horrible vehicle. <laughs> the wheel span between the wheels was about a foot and a half. That's what it would be like. That's so, a, so technically, you could go over the tip of Mount Everest with it and probably not touch the tip. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the uh, the Suzuki. Oh, we'll have to look that up. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it was a horrible vehicle. Mm. Horrible vehicle, but. Not but Asian a, Matt, you know, is not a horrible vehicle at all. He is not a horrible he's, he's vehicle. He's a pretty smooth ride. He's a very smooth ride. <laughs> that song was very nice. <laughs> Thanks. Was, uh, what, what I like best about it is, while you sing that, I look up pictures of Britney Spears. Fair enough. I, I would, too, if I wasn't, both my hands were busy. But I don't busy. know if you noticed on my screen over here, I was looking up the ones that I put your head on. <laughs> oh, right. So I just want you to know those are in my subfolder. Sub folder of the sub cockles of my sub folders yeah mm-hmm. oh got it leave us you were you were kind of gone for two weeks but not really yeah i know that was that was interesting <laughs> just because i said you know j dog there isn't any possible way i will be here for two weeks and then somehow i managed to manage to be a surprise guest sa- and a call-in and, guest and save the show you know which is what i do first surprise guest you. of the show <laughs> took 20 podcasts to get a surprise guest and it was leave us that was that was something. Mm. That was something. <clears throat> we had some technical difficulties in that show. Yes, yes. Good thing so. there's elevator music playing constantly at North Brown Studios. Right. You and know, then, so. so you can always fire that off when you need it. Mm-hmm. You know, the board went out, and then the computer died. <laughs> so, you know, technical difficulties. <laughs> was that the episode that you... No, that wasn't the episode that you dumped a bunch of... No, that was with Big Rich. (laughs) Oh, that's right. Which the board's fine. It survived. Good. Because it poured right down into the the number one and number two lines, and that's what we're always talking on. No. They're fine. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they might sound a little better. Probably cleaner. Probably just happy to, you know, get a little drink. Speaking of the drinky drink. Yes. uh, Levis and I took a trip to the liquor store right before the show. (laughs) Yes, we did. Because we did not have any honey whiskey. (laughs) It so, was a tragedy, and I wouldn't. I refuse to speak without it. Exactly. So as we now, I mean, we could have done a prickly pear beer, but you got no ice to shake at the beginning of the show. Mm, mm-hmm. It's a staple now. Mm-hmm. We have to do that. So we went into the liquor store, which is the Liquor and Wine in Genoa, Illinois, which is my favorite uh, double entendre yes. in in the whole town. Um, usually, back in Levis's early days, before he met his lovely bride, he ran into the liquor and wine quite a bit. <laughs> many, many girls came out of oh, bathrooms yeah. and parties whining. Oh, the stories. <laughs> the stories I couldn't tell. Well, kind of like we did uh, last week. Uh, why did I work there? Mm, it could mm-hmm. be, why did I make her wine? <laughs> By Levis. <laughs> but, <laughs> so that could go on for uh, till podcast 100. I was going to say, that's the problem, is that, uh, you know, that... That segment would be, you know, six and a half hours long, you know, so. <laughs> well, we only got three hours a day on Spreaker, <laughs> so you'd have to break it in three segments. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, that, that would leave, like, Lord of the Rings. Yes. It would be epic like that. It would be epic. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we went in there, and we we went to the whiskey section. A lot of whiskeys there. I appreciated that. And uh, Levis pointed one out to me that was recommended by In Studio Alex. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Angel's Envy for yes. forty nine ninety five a bottle. <laughs> it looked fantastic. Great presentation. Uh, not a, I'm not a whiskey connoisseur, so obviously. Oh, like you're not going to drop fifty bucks on whiskey. 
I would have in studio. Alex told me to. Yeah, I know. He told me to, too. But I had my heart set on the honey tonight. Okay. But I would not be against trying that whiskey because it actually had a picture of angels on the back of the bottle. Or angel wings oh, I on the back that. of the bottle. Yes. Okay. So that got me excited. So you, so you had to have your honey whiskey. Had to have my honey whiskey. So I grabbed the honey whiskey. It was in my hand. Mm-hmm. But right next to the honey whiskey for a dollar eighty nine cheaper mm-hmm. was the same brand, Evan Williams, but it was cherry whiskey. That's kind of a risk. It is a risk. But the fact kind that of a we gamble. The fact yeah. that the fact that we mix it with Coke and Levis looked at me and said, Well, cherry Coke. Uh huh. And I left it up to him and I said, Levis. Levis. <laughs> He just turned to me and, and said that. He had to make eye contact to say my name. I listeners. said, if you want to go cherry, I'm game. <laughs> and if you want a liquor and wine, that's that's fine with me. And uh, he said, go cherry, and we went cherry. And you know what? That's the first time I've ever seen a uh, liquor store attendant blush, So, <laughs> which was pretty impressive. He did blush a bit. I think so. Yes, he did. It was the whole you want to go cherry conversation. Yes. But, he wasn't expecting. And then we wanted to make him feel a little better, so after we purchased the cherry liquor and the Coke and pushed it aside, we went and looked at the beers. Mm-hmm. Because we wanted to, you know... Like the real Genoa. Like a manly, you know, oh, a craft beer. You know, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to leave with our cherry liquor now. <laughs> so but, tonight we are drinking this cherry liquor, and I... What do you think? Filled up half the glass with just whiskey and then poured Coke on top, <laughs> and I can't taste the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's really sweet. It's... it's it's pretty darn good. Yeah. Never had cherry whiskey before. It has kind of a cotton candy smell, though. I mean, it's very... I feel like it's a. It's the Shirley Temple of whiskeys, <laughs> is what it tastes like. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll continue this throughout the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, some of us have to work tomorrow. Ha <laughs> ha! Some of us. But that doesn't matter. I'm not going to stop. Because <clears throat> uh, it's commit. delicious. Yes. It's because, delicious. I and you commit to, to this show. That's what I like about you, J Dog. I have. You I came down here and did uh, pre studio work for a good ten minutes before you got here. And you bought a fifteen dollar bottle of booze. Fifteen dollar <laughs> the, 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 fifteen dollar the, the, dollar easy for me to say fifteen dollar <laughs> bottle of cherry whiskey <laughs> to celebrate Levis coming back to the studio and sitting in his chair, drinking from his glass, talking in his microphone, wearing his headphones and touching his You know, I noticed that when I put the head <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> When I put my headphones on, I smelled wontons, so that <laughs> explains that. <laughs> wontons yes. or tauntons? <laughs> no, 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 wontons. Because there was a tauntaun down here the other day, and he crapped in the corner of my basement. <laughs> I don't know if you've got any on your chair there. A wonton. Or what What did uh, Asian Matt refer to? Uh, wonton happiness. The name of the salad at uh, Sweet Tomatoes. <laughs> did you smell a little wonton happiness? I, I think I did. Yes, I, I can... It's kind of nice to listen to life through wonton happiness. So, and on these headphones. Well, now, did you did you have a chance to listen to podcast twenty one? I did, I did. I yeah, got right. to listen to all the parts that I wasn't involved in with my phone call, which was probably a little weird. It was. It was fun actually listening to the show. Well, and I like it because you know you guys just talked about me for half the show, so that was mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah, it's kind of nice to hear what people are saying about you behind your back. Well, have sort you, of to the rest of the public. Have you, you ever know? seen? And this is gonna, you know, this is gonna date my age here, I guess. Chili Willy cartoons. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, Chili Willy cartoons. What was the was, walrus's name. There was a, oh, he had a name. Can't remember the walrus. You can't remember the Suzuki. You can't remember the walrus. But I know that Chili Willy, I think, was starving and he was hungry. Mm. And there was another. I think it may have been the walrus that was starving and hungry. And every time he looked at Chili Willy, Chili Willy turned into like a baked chicken. Yes, in his eyes, uh-huh. a little chicken. When Asian Matt was here, <laughs> every time I glanced over, he'd be talking and talking, and I just kind of gaze over, and suddenly, leave us would just appear on his face, and I, I would be lost. Oh. I'd be lost in in his conversation. And uh, you might have noticed a couple of times I stuttered and didn't know what he was talking about. Because <laughs> if you want to call that wonton happiness, that's fine. Pretty much. But yeah. all, I, I just kept looking. I kept seeing Levis over there. I thought you were going to say you looked over at Asian Matt and saw, you know, I don't know, um, teriyaki chicken or something. Um, I just had a... <laughs> there you go. Why don't you finish that? Yeah. 
Just about swallowed an ice cube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I didn't. I saved it, and then there. But there folks, you, you should have seen him juggle it with his lips while he was trying to. Uh, oh, you say that to not, all the guys. Well, it, maybe I do yes. in their own basement. I just can't stop drinking this. My, my, <laughs> I just keep reaching for it, it. It's really good. It is really good. So Asian Matt being here, let's uh, let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. Uh, co-hosted two shows. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And uh, sat in the chair mm-hmm. in 1972. Yeah, I know. A yellow chair. Uh, oh, I know. I know exactly. What do, what do we think? How do we rate Asian Matt? How do we think he did? <sighs> oh, did I just sigh out loud? You did. Uh, You're supposed to read the teleprompter okay. to yourself, not... Uh, you know. Asian Matt is a wonderful human being with a real knack for ra- radio production. Sigh. <sighs> oh, wait, no, that's the wrong kind of sigh. It's supposed to be the... Uh, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Maybe that's what... Yeah, that's that's more of an Asian Matt response, it is. I think. I thought he did well. He did. Not that I'm any judge or I have any right to judge anybody on the radio. <laughs> but... He stepped right in, and his stories came out. There wasn't any hesitation. Filled right in. I think he did a good job. I'm, I'm kind of glad that you invited me back, frankly. Yeah. So and just it, because... And it was a rough decision this week of who was going to be in that chair. That's what I'm sure Let's it was. Here. But, you know, don't go telling me that, or I might just go crazy. Actually, Asian Matt and I were talking about uh, why DJs are not notified before their last day. Oh, why is that? So, well... We were talking about uh, oldie timey DJs because they can talk to millions of people about the yeah firing about, them. About, That's what I would think. I, I believe that has something to do with it. And uh, he had <laughs> Asian Matt's not in the studio tonight, but I will tell you the stories <laughs> that he would have told if he were here. All right, you're welcome, Asian Matt. So uh, we were talking about uh, some Chicago um, <clears throat> DJs from our past that we remembered and. Um, I said, well, at least now with the internet, you have a chance of finding where these people land, you know, or why they left or something. But uh, back in the day, you would just be listening to the radio and then, you know, you'd listen again on a Tuesday and suddenly uh, the, you know, the format has changed. You know, you were listening to alternative rock and now you're listening to, you know, easy easy classics, right. you know, something like that. And, um, and all the DJs would be different and it was just suddenly, you know, or a syndicated show, you know? So, um, but, uh, Asian Matt had a story about a DJ that found out before his last show, uh, that it was his last day. And, um, and he proceeded to lock himself in the booth <laughs> and then play explicit songs. <laughs> so, Apparently that set the precedence and broke it for everybody. Yeah. So, I guess that makes sense to me. I would have done it. I, I'm sure you would have. I and mean, that, you have that you have that whole power of they can't just shut you off because that's going to turn listeners off. But you have that power while you're on there to speak to millions of people and do whatever the heck you want mm-hmm. and throw them under the bus <laughs> several times. <laughs> but if you're a radio station manager or owner or producer. What do you care if you get thrown under the bus? Well, what I'm wondering is how much the studio got fined for what he played. True. You know, now that, that could be a way that he would have gotten after them. Yes. You know, especially if you get, I don't know, do you get charged per incident? You know, and you find some song that's, no. you know, whatever, F the police or whatnot. You and know, what's wrong that, with that? Well, I'm, I mean, you know, with everything going on in the country, yeah, I mean, what's well, wrong with that? Uh, other than, yeah, yeah other than the f bomb, <laughs> that was the only point I was trying to make. I wasn't trying to make a political statement about once you know, every twelve hundred minutes. <laughs> once every twelve hundred minutes on this show, you will get an f bomb from Levis. I, that's on average, so you might have to you might have to wait twenty four hundred minutes. True, it is just an and average. then get two of them. You know, I don't know. What we don't know. You might get two in a row. They just but then you won't hear anything for another twenty four hundred minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, well, we got plenty of time to work on it because I think when I looked at our statistics for our storage space for the podcast <laughs> on our Ooh. storage, are we getting close? Are we almost full? Uh, we are now on podcast twenty two, and we are up to four <laughs> percent. Yeah, because the most incredible thing is 
with all of the content and all of the glory that goes into this show, <laughs> all of the inspiration that gets poured out to our listeners, every one of these programs are about 38 megabytes. Oh. And they're all in stereo. Yeah, that's... It, and digitally remastered. That would explain why... Complete with air conditioning in the background. <laughs> But I like the breeze, and <laughs> that explains why I can download them onto my phone with no problem whatsoever. Exactly, they're like thirty-eight megabytes. Mm -hmm. So, and that doesn't matter if you put uh, music in; doesn't they're all thirty-eight megabytes. <laughs> so, I think we're gonna get probably to podcast nine hundred eighty-six before we have to get rid of one. <laughs> Speaking of nine hundred eighty-six, <clears throat> actually, uh, okay. So, I have this old but nice camera. All right. All right. It's an SLR type. It's, this is how old it is. All right. All right. It has a view screen on the back. So it's not so old that you only have to look through the little viewfinder. Oh, so it's still digital. It is digital. So you're calling a digital camera old now. Well, now wait a minute. It's, but it is old enough that you don't get to, there's no preview on the screen. You have to look through the viewfinder, oh. you take the picture, and then you get, this is the picture that you took. Right. All right? As opposed to, you know, trying to, you all, you have to have your eye through the viewfinder in right. order to know The what screen's only there to show you what you took a picture of. Yes. And then you That's can go That's an old-ass camera. You see? I'm telling you. But it's nice. But um, that was back in the days when nobody <laughs> would ever need a memory card bigger than two gig. Right. You know, so we had a one gig card. It holds 332 pictures, which is fine. You know, by then you should probably get them off the camera anyway. Probably. And uh, so, which is fine, but it also only did one format of the of the memory cards, and now they have the super fast ones. Right. And you couldn't do anything with it. So um, we were on vacation the other week. I don't know if you noticed. I was not in the studio. I believe we so. called you somewhere. Yes. Felt like you were here. No, I think though. you called me something. Felt like you were here. So <laughs> But uh anyway, so we're on vacation and and I'm like, surely they fixed this by now. Right. So I look it up and yes, there is a there's a firmware update. It takes the bigger cards, you can put up to thirty two gig in it, you know. Cool. Exactly. So uh you know, I follow the directions, I run the firmware update. But what I didn't think about is that the um the readout, the display of how many pictures you can, are left, you know, how much space you have left on this thing, it, it gives you in pictures, which before was, you know, 300 something and would count down, only goes to 999. <laughs> so it was not 2K ready. So, no, no. And so when I put in the 16 gig card, uh, it had a problem. Well, I shouldn't say that. I put the 16 gig card in, it read it, it was fine, but the little display says, you have 999 pictures left. Right. And then I took two pictures, and it says, you have 999 <laughs> pictures left. And by my calculations, I have about uh, 6,398 pictures left that I can take on that. But I won't know until I'm down to 999. So say with a 4-gig card, you would, let's say you have 999 pictures exactly mm -hmm. on a 4-gig card. But you put a 16-gig card in, now you have 999 kick-ass pictures left. <laughs> Right. And if you put in a 32 gig card, you have 999 ridiculously crazy awesome pictures. 4K. Left. Yeah. <laughs> so you always have 999 left, but maybe they're a little better. Maybe the quality just keeps going up. That could be. That could be. Um, when it comes to the picture taking, mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about the SLRs and 999 great awesome pictures or not so awesome pictures. It almost makes me think that photographers really don't earn their keep these days. Because when you have these cameras that can do 100 bursts right. with 999 pictures available, and you just hit the button and hold it down, and then when you're done with the wedding, you go through and look for that one glorious shot. Sure. And mm -hmm. you get all the praise and all the accolades for it. Maybe it's not a bad gig to be into. I, I can see your point, uh, but I... I My, know they're still in art. The, the counterpoint. I get it, lighting, yes. shadows, <laughs> great light. Uh, yeah, yeah. I get aperture. That's a word. Uh, it is a word. I bet so. you can't spell it, but it's a word. ap a sure. <laughs> I don't have you, my, you I don't got have my me. bell. Yeah. But it's spelled with an S and a T and a U and a, and a, and a, and a F and a U. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 
But I, I know there's an art to it, but I know that that probably happens quite a bit. Well, and it, there's a, a... What do you call it? The um, You don't have to wait anymore. There's a spontaneous... Um, this, this cherry stuff is just making me lose my words. Um, Give me a sign. Delayed gratification. Ah, yes. So you take the picture, you find out whether it's good or not, and you do it again right away. You don't have to go spend you know twenty minutes in a dark room. You want to talk about delayed gratification? I found in the cupboard behind the medicine, behind the old coffee grinds that I bought three years ago, <laughs> a bag with three undeveloped rolls of film Ooh. that I know are from about 2004 <laughs> when we went to Florida. Nice. Also in that bag, do you remember the old cameras? They called them 110 film, and it was like a long rectangular camera, <laughs> and the film was like stretched, so it was a little bit longer. It was like 110 film. That's even older than I have one of those mine. from when I went to Germany in 1992, nice. and it has not been developed. I wonder if I could even get it developed, <laughs> if it would even work, or if it's bad now. But so, I found it. I just don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Well, I think you can still get it developed, but you just can't you can't run down to Jewel Osco and do it anymore. I just don't know if I want the kids around when I look at them. <laughs> now, how many times have you been to Germany? Uh, well, if if you consider by the day, I was there about 92 times. That or once for 92 days. Oh. Yes. Okay. So just once. All right. Well, it's kind of like being there 92 times. But that was time back in 92. Up, new, yeah. That was back in 92. Yeah. In 92, I was there for a summer. So, the... Uh, Which, did I talk about the visa? I don't know if I talked about the visa. I don't know, but I wanted to bring up the beer got, that, and, oh, the, that's and right. the brewery. And then I'll that, tell you about the visa that I had, the work visa that I had to use while I was the there. The what visa? The work visa. Oh, I thought you said Vork. Vork? Well, oh. V's and W's, which we learned from Asian Matt. Uh, These are W's, W's, yes. are V's. The Vork. The Vork the <laughs> visa. I, see, I thought you went Vilken on me. Vilke. Yeah, the, the Kronbacher <laughs> beer. That's what you were talking about. Yes. When I was in Germany, I met a man. Uh, don't remember his name, because every time I was around him, I was stone drunk. It sounds like a limerick. <laughs> I met a man. Don't in, know his name. In Germany, I met a man. Yeah. I have and to rhyme it. But. He lived directly across the street from the Kronbacher, or Kronbacher mm -hmm. brewery. And he worked there. Why not? He lived across the street. Might mm -hmm. as well work at the brewery. So he always had 12 packs of Kronbacher pills beer in his fridge <clears throat> so i learned how to drink that beer quite well <laughs> tonight when we were at the liquor and wine mm -hmm. you should know what's finest doing our manly beer search they had a six pack of chrome bacher beer and i couldn't believe that it could possibly be the same beer and i can't read so leave us read for me on the actual <laughs> package and he said imported from germany into houston and delivered to illinois it did so it's got to be the same beer. And I have these bottles that I have, that I've saved and brought home to show, you know, this is German beer. Now it's at my local liquor store. And I wish that um, the listeners could have seen your face when the heavens broke open <laughs> and light shone down. Krombacher! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm Krombacher, bitte. <laughs> there was like, yeah, talk about angels envy. Yeah, exactly. They they were going for your Krumbacher. So I probably will. <laughs> That's a going for my Krumbacher. Uh -huh. So yeah, were. I, I'm going to buy a six pack. And I'm going to see are. if it's the same because I distinctly remember that taste. I know you are because not only did I swallow that taste several times, I threw that taste up a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember it <laughs> to a T. <tea. laughs> a lot of that Krumbacher over in Germany and the work mm -hmm. visa that I was going to tell yes. you about. Mm -hmm. um, worked there for 90 days. I was 19 years old. Okay. And I was doing a song and dance review on stage. Because <laughs> if I were to go see a song and dance review, <laughs> I would want J Dog front and center. Ooh la! la. You know what? Every you know, I got to sing a Manfred Mann song. Every Thursday night is like you know I, a, a song review. I got with to sing you. Chuck Berry Manfred Mann. I did solos for. <laughs> Let me tell you. Come on without. Come on within. You'll not see nothing but the mighty Quinn. Yeah, and you thought I couldn't do that. Nice harmony, by the way. Thanks. So I'll get there. I did that review. I did it for 92 days. But the work visa was only good for 90 days. What the work visa allowed me to do was work there tax-free in America. 
Once I got past 90 days, then I had to pay tax in America on the money that I made. Oh. But up to 90 days or less, I only paid tax in, in Germany. Germany. Interesting. I'm 19 and nobody told me this. Yeah. So we worked 92 days. Okay. So when I did my taxes that next year, <laughs> I owed like $698. Oh, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I was 19. I didn't have any money. Oh, man. And I had to come up with $698. <clears throat> so... Do you know how I got it? Um, I suspect it was a long evening for you. Well, it was two evenings. Working the uh, the streets of Genoa? No, it was uh, when I went. Jimberly give you a couple pointers? <laughs> had, to, had to get a job at the local gas station and pay mom and dad back. Oh, there you go. <laughs> they fronted me the $698. See, no, I hadn't heard that part of the story about the uh, why did I work there. Yeah, now well, I know why you worked at the... Uh, but I did not talk about the gas station job. No, not... Not the other week, right. but right. But there you go. Why did I work there? Because I had to pay mom and dad back yeah. for the visa money that I owed because you owed America money. from my work in Germany. <laughs> and I didn't save a dime from Germany. There was actually there was six people in the group. Um, it was me and a good friend of mine, Chuck. We were both from the same town. We grew up together, so we knew each other and we did this together. But the four people we roomed with, one was from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. One was from Colorado. One was from Michigan, and I'm trying to remember the other girl, and I think she was also from Wisconsin. So kind of a spread around. And at the time, uh, what was the name of that show on MTV? Um, House something. Uh, Real World. Real World, I think mm-hmm. it was. Yeah, that's it. It was. That's what we called it at the time because that's what it was like. It was like yeah. Real World. Here's six people. you got three bedrooms, and you're going to live together. <laughs> and we lived in an upstairs <laughs> flat above Oma and Opa, mm-hmm. my grandpa. Mm-hmm. We just called them Oma and Opa. They rented out the house to the entertainment company that we worked for. Okay. So they made money from the entertainment company to let us live upstairs. Sure. We had three bedrooms, a small kitchenette, and like a living area. Lots of stories. And we can get into that some other night. <laughs> we got some other stuff to touch tonight. <laughs> but the touch, six people, touch on. of the six people, one of the, the gentleman's name was Paul, and he, he was the one from Stevens Point, and he was saving money for college. So we made about 350 bucks American. A week. Okay. And Can I interrupt for just a minute? You may. This, is, this drink is like the Shirley Temple of whiskeys. It's lovely. It, it's going fast. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. going fast, and that's why these stories are starting. That's why I'm talking faster. <laughs> so Paul decided to save for college. So like we'd get our paycheck, and he'd put like $250 in a cup, and then take out 50 bucks, and he'd want to go to the bar. Mm-hmm. And Chuck and I are like, are you out of your mind? We're in Germany. I didn't come back with a dime. <laughs> and, and my money, if we got paid on a Monday, my money was gone Wednesday. Oh, and I was eating bread the rest of the week. <laughs> well, there was leftover Kronbacher in the beer. Or, or in the beer. In the beer. <laughs> in the fridge. In the, the Kronbacher beer in the fridge. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but one of my favorite stories over there, the we were there in 1991. The war ended in 45. So you probably have some older people that were very much around at that time mm-hmm. and still did not have a very much of a liking for Americans. Really? You mean in Europe in the they older don't generation. just inherently love the Americans? The younger crowd did. I see. Karaoke bars were fantastic <laughs> because we were 10 years ahead of them in music so I already knew all the music they were listening oh. to and I looked like a rock star up on stage. Mm-hmm. However, the local grocery store in town just wanted to go in and buy some ham from the deli. Just ham. I just wanted ham, cheese, and bread so I could make ham and cheese sandwiches. How, how do you say ham in German? You, it's schinken. Really? And I'm getting to that. I'm impressed. So I went in and I asked her, ham, ham sandwiches. She was probably 60, 70 years old. Mm-hmm. Just looking at me with a blank stare. And she said, no English. And I'm like, oh, pig. Uh-huh. And I'm like making the noise. <laughs> and I'm trying to, I'm like, oink, oink. And I'm trying to like ham and, and I'm going through this whole thing. And then... Uh, I go into my little dictionary that I have in my pocket, and I see that it's called Schinken. So okay. I say Schinken, and she points over to the ham. Okay. Which is over in the belly. It's over in the park. So you I pronounced didn't see. it right. So I buy it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but we probably went through a good five minutes of me trying to get her to understand it was <laughs> making pig noises. And at the end of that, as we're walking out, she says, have a nice evening, gentlemen. <laughs> Clear as day. And I just... <laughs> took it and left. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? I'm not going to argue. Right. I mean, you we, got you got your ham. We already won the war. So I'm <laughs> going to rub in your face. <laughs> so, yes, uh, ein Schinken, ein uh, yeah. Uberstumpen <laughs> Schinken, bitte. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't that your favorite beer? <laughs> <laughs> Next to Kronbacher, yes. Schinken, bitte. Let me get some more of this whiskey here. Mm. 
So yeah, that was a little bit of Germany there for you. <laughs> but that was that was a long, long time ago. We don't want to talk about a long, long time ago. Okay. We want to talk about more recent events. Yes. Because that's just going to bore everybody. But I'll tell you what, if you mm. saw me in that black t-shirt, those black jeans, and those black Beatles boots singing See, Manfred Mann. I was going to say, the, the problem with the, 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 the blessing and the curse of the 90s is that, you know, a lot of that stuff, if it's... If it's still Everybody's around. building ships and <laughs> boats. <laughs> oh man! If, if it's around anywhere, it's all coming back to me. Then it's it's on VHS, and we got to dig it out. And you can't just you know oh, actually, upload have, it from your phone. I got it on a file on the computer. If you want me to, well, you shouldn't be saying that to <laughs> everybody. Maybe I'll actually for for next week's show, I'll find a snippet of me singing Manfred Mann I, I live think we should on the do stage. That. And I'm telling you, I was a rock star. I was 19, and there Absolutely. was 2,000 people. In the audience, mm-hmm. in this huge tent, all watching enjoying, this review. All enjoying Krumbacher. And enjoying Krumbacher and watching me sing Manfred Mann. Mm-hmm. I was a freaking rock star. <laughs> uh, I had kids coming up to me afterwards asking me if I would autograph their arm. Because they didn't have any paper. <laughs> so I was signing autographs on their arm. It was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Oh, I'm just getting too excited. More whiskey. Glory days. Oh. Glory days, right. Jago. Fast forward, Jay-Gog. fast forward. Doo-doo. Yeah, now you're here drinking cherry whiskey. <laughs> drinking cherry whiskey <laughs> in the basement. He was on vacation last week and he went up north. I did go up north. To Michigan. To Michigan, to... Illinois, I think, as we talked about. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Very nice this time here. Very <laughs> oh, nice this time. crud. I didn't get a chance to, to uh, change clothes after. Um, after you sat in Asian Matt's teriyaki yeah, sauce. Yeah, and now I'm stuck here. But. Uh, uh, I don't normally buy a souvenir shirt, but I did buy one, and it was quite the hit. And it was so, not, I'm a hooker on the weekends? It, no, <laughs> it wasn't. Although I did look for a Captain Sa- Salmon equivalent, and you know nothing compares to Captain no, Salmon. No, it does not. So, or, yeah, or his shirt that J-Dog tends to wear. Yes. So, uh, <clears throat> however, I found one, and I don't, I'm going to describe this poorly, but Basically, it has the outline of the state of Michigan. Okay. And then it's the rest of the United States uh, done as in uh, typography. So it's a word, but you can tell okay. by the shape that it's the rest of the United States. Right. And so the rest of the United States, uh, the word that is used is not America. The word that is used is not Michigan. <laughs> So you have Michigan and everywhere else and is... And everything else is not Michigan. not Michigan. And nice. people in Michigan loved it. Oh, I they bet. They thought it was fantastic. So, And they're like, but you don't live in Michigan. And I said, yes, that's true. I live in not Michigan. Right. And then they understood. So, The weirdest thing about Michigan, and yes, the J-Dog family vacations there every year as well. Uh, both the J-Dog and Levis families love it there. It's It's... One of the most beautiful spots in the world, when you start talking about northern Michigan, Mackinac Island, uh, Sleeping Bear Dunes, Traverse City, mm-hmm. Petoskey Bay, all of those areas. While it also has one of the crappiest places in America on the <laughs> other side of the state, in Detroit. And I've been to Detroit. I've been downtown to see a, a Bears game at the stadium. Oh, that's right. And when you are yeah. right by Ford Field, Joe Louis Arena, Tiger Stadium, I think it's Tiger Stadium where the... The Detroit Tigers play. It's a wonderful little area with tons of bars and everything's hopping and everybody's happy. But I mean, you are you are literally three hundred feet away from horror yeah. in any direction once you step out of that small area. And just it's to like, get down there, it's like the purge. It was yes. <laughs> it, it. I mean, when people say you know, like the South Side of Chicago looks like a war zone, this is a war zone. Yeah. It was a war zone. Yeah. There was a war there because the all the, the buildings, buildings are... Just, we were kind of stuck on the highway going down there and I have no idea where we were. I wasn't driving mm-hmm. so I was just kind of looking around. <clears throat> but like you could see, it was like buildings were cut in half and you could see inside just like a like Call of Duty <laughs> 2 when you're fighting and you're, and you're shooting across at these half buildings. They, everywhere. It wasn't just one or two. It was everywhere. I heard a while ago and I, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear a follow up for it but um there was something about, you know, of course, property taxes or properties were uh, values were are plummeting exactly. you know, over there. And so they didn't quite know what to do about it because they had all these abandoned properties. The owner has to pay you to take it. Well, and what they had decided was if there was an abandoned property next to you, they would basically, you know, give it to you, you know, at this extreme discount 
you know, they would sell it to you because at least if you're there, you know, you might kind of care about it. <laughs> but <clears throat> you might plant a flower. Yeah, or something. You know, it would be like, well, you know, maybe someday this will. If you look on something. real estate in Detroit, there's homes. But, two bedroom homes, one bath, two bedroom, uh, thousand square feet for like $5,000. Yeah, I believe it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and you can't even go in there like a. Like a slumlord and say, well, I'll buy like 10 of them and rent them. There's nobody to... Because nobody's going to rent them. Nobody, yeah. It's just dead property. That's, that's the whole problem. So mm-hmm. that's why Michigan just is the weirdest thing. Because you go up north and you stay on the west side. It's one of the most beautiful states in the country. Mm-hmm. And and the activities and everything to do in the wine country up north and everything. And then there's Detroit. How do you put all that in the same <laughs> state? Oh. And they're, I've never been to Windsor. They're probably saying the same thing. They probably are. Um, I've never been to Windsor, which is the city that's directly across from Detroit, oh, okay. where Canada is actually south of America. Yes. The one yeah. point. Um, but I've heard so many stories about Windsor. Okay. <laughs> it's like Detroit, but really good strippers. <laughs> like hot strippers. They're all on the Windsor side. Oh. So if you want to step it up a notch, you the, go to another country and see the strippers. The, the classy. <laughs> and, then, and then you can enjoy living in Detroit, I guess. So... But yeah, that's wow. a, that's just ridiculous how beautiful that state is and how horrible that state is at the same that, time. That kind of uh, pales my story about um, another thing that... So we went to Mackinac Island, and if you go to Mackinac, you buy fudge, period, end of discussion. Well, if you don't, they just throw it at you. <laughs> if they <laughs> don't... you pick it up and eat it. I was going to say, if they don't, the horses do, and then you, uh, <laughs> you don't want to eat that fudge, though. So anyway... Um, so I, I was on. I, ju- I just got that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was on fudge duty. He's talking about so. the poo. <laughs> More whiskey, please. <laughs> Thanks for spelling that out for everybody. P O O poo. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so it's my job to go buy fudge because I'm the one who. Uh, has Why is it your people. job to go buy fudge? Because I, you make that sound like it's just when you go through there, it's job. just obvious yeah. that it's dad's job to go get fudge. Well, nobody else you know, can handle the responsibility of it or, or well, be burdened by the, the choices. you got to be a good fudge picker. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, and when it comes to yeah, that, I am, yeah, I'm <laughs> king. I'm king of the fudge pile. <laughs> so... If you if you want if you want a good fudge picker, someone that's going to give you the creamiest, we should write. We should do a commercial <laughs> on fudge picking. Anyway, so the From point is back and all to your table. <laughs> there you go, Big Rich. It's kind of like your Atkinson Farms uh, reference there. So, go. Okay, I'm done. Go. All right. Anyway, drink. no. Normally. All right, so they come in like half pound slabs or something, and uh, <laughs> what? And just fudge picking half pound slabs. Keep going, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> and normally, <laughs> two at the most, three is plenty because the stuff is so thick and rich. You can't. Is it? You, <laughs> wait, it's thick or is it <laughs> thick? <Thicker. laughs> Oh, I, I love it when Leva says thick up. <laughs> thick up. Ah, it's so thick. <laughs> fudge. Oh, that fudge picking gets thick when Levis is in town. All right, go ahead. I'm I'm not going to interrupt you anymore. <laughs> you might not, but I think you're... Uh, I'm turning my mic cherry. off. Go. <laughs> I think your cherry go whiskey ahead. is going to. I'm not talking anymore. Anyway, this is going to be so anticlimactic because we normally buy like three... And this time, I had a bunch of friends that I owed favors to, so I uh, I bought ten. All right, I spent a ridiculous amount of money on fudge. Wait, you bought ten pounds? I, I bought or ten slabs. slabs. I bought ten slabs. Whatever the five it, pounds of fudge, at least five pounds of fudge. All right, and uh, and we came home and uh. We opened it all up, and of course, you know, it's it's ten different ones, but there's like eight different flavors. You know, I did double up a couple, and um, <clears throat> and the and people start people, you know, my family people people start uh, chowing down. I'm like, whoa, hey, most of these are gifts. Right. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, you know, and I 
Gifts like, for us. Yeah, gifts for gifts for other people. And they just looked at me dumbfounded. Like I had ever <laughs> like I normally buy five pounds of fudge for my family. <laughs> And um, and he opens up the hotel room and just throws it in and shuts the door. <laughs> and you hear, gah, 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 gah. and then he opens up and there's just empty boxes. And, <laughs> it smells like chocolate. And uh, anyway, so yeah, then I then I set aside the ones that had to be given away, and there were like th- three pounds left. Or and uh, and they're like, "This is it." And I'm like, "There's only three other members of my family." <laughs> And, and seriously, the, the, you can only eat like, you know, a a small portion at a time. You know, it's just anyway. I I told you the story would be anticlimactic, but <laughs> because it started out with with fudge picking, and you just can't you know get above that. But but it's anyway. It's <laughs> apparently, I did not buy enough fudge for my family. Is what I'm saying. Levis, professional fudge picker. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I mean, I knew you were good at picking the ten-string gilly, <laughs> but you never told me about your fudge picking uh, well, abilities. Well, if you ask my family, apparently I'm uh, I'm a little stingy on the fudge. <laughs> I like to hold it in. <laughs> I don't, oh, I don't share it with everybody. I guess. Oh, this is so, cool. And of course, it's like, well, then you go pick the fudge, and they're like, well, it was your job, and I'm like, oh, it's such a typical this family. This is called the sixth grade giggles. <laughs> <laughs> Hold in the fudge. Brought to you by Evan Williams. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my Lord. Well, all, right, well, all right. What else are after, we talking about? After all of this giggliness, <clears throat> uh, we're, getting, we're getting bottleneck deep in this show here. A um, <laughs> couple things I wanted to cover first, though. Uh, all this fudge picking just has inspired me mm. like you cannot believe. And that's why I want to just go ahead and throw in the inspirational thought of the day. Oh, <laughs> Fantastic. I heard last week's. So it was amazing. So let's see what we got here. And now, on the J Dog and Leva Show, inspirational thought of the day. You can let your armpits go a couple of days, maybe, but not your ass. <laughs> How could you tell someone, I love you, darling, knowing in your heart you haven't washed your ass? I'm not talking about your whole ass. I'm talking about your ass whole. You'd be surprised at pollution that can be found in an area the size of a dime. Or a 50 cent piece. Or a silver dollar. This has been another inspirational thought of the day on the J Dog and Levis show. I, I am inspired. I need to go wash. So I'm going to go shower walk. right now. After all that fudge picking, you might want to do that. You're probably about the size of a silver dollar right I, now. I didn't. I didn't check the pollution level. So. <laughs> Red Fox, everybody. I figured. It Red had Fox to of be. Sanford and Son. It had to be Red Fox. Oh. Without, uh, you know, after all the fudge picking and that, I dug that one out. <laughs> dug that one out of the did. archives. <laughs> oh. If you ever get a chance and you want to listen to something really raunchy, listen to a Red Fox stand-up. <sighs> I, I've Holy heard that. Holy cow. I've heard that. Oh. I, I mean, that, that particular segment went on further oh, about sure. why washing your butt is so important. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so... And I think he actually had an album mm. called "Wash Your Ass." I think it was that was like the whole that was the 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 basis of that whole album right. was that little bit right. So, Red Fox, good friend of the show. Yeah, <laughs> we'll I, I try believe, and get him in studio sometime. I, was say, I believe he's listening right now. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Inspirational thought of the day here, right here on J Dog and Levis. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> we we'd like to we came up with a new segment right before the show started. Yes. Oh. I'm excited about this. And Levis named this one. And it is called Contact List Roulette. Mm-hmm. And that contact list happens to be my phone. Absolutely. Uh, we, well, we, it's your own fault because you said, I have 1,200 people on here. What am I going to do about that? And I went ahead and spun the roulette wheel. Mm-hmm. And this could go either way. Because when you talk about Contact List Roulette... We don't have a song yet, unless you want to make one. 
contact list roulette. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, on the J Dog and Leva show. <laughs> Complete with a guitar solo. Man, you can fudge pick that guitar. I got it. So, contact list roulette. So, I just basically went through and I pointed at one, and there you go. And this particular contact, we're going to call. They may answer, they may not. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's my high school prom date. <laughs> is he ready for it? He is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, I should have said, have you talked to him lately? <laughs> his name is Amy. <laughs> and we'll refer to this uh, character of the show as Florida Amy. Why? Because I'm calling Florida, and they're an hour ahead of us. Okay. So it's actually 10 o'clock at night, so we don't know what's going to happen. Okay. But this person has no idea we're calling, and uh, I don't even know if she knows we do a show. <laughs> tell you the truth. So let's see what happens. Contact uh, wheel roulette. Let me see if I can do an actual live Contact phone call here. Contact wheel roulette. Oh, I think it's going. Oh, yeah. There it is. Florida Amy. I'm going to let you do the talking, at least some of it. Until she figures out I'm here and realizes that she would rather be talking to me. Or it could be J-Dog's voicemail. That's the next segment. Could be. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic oh, voice message yeah. system. Four, zero. Amy has a sexy voice. <laughs> she does. <laughs> Five. Available. At the tone, I'm getting good at this leaving voicemail stuff. Mm-hmm. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Florida Amy, uh, I hope this is still your number. <laughs> this is your prom date from 1991. This is J Dog on the J Dog and Leva show live here on a Thursday <laughs> evening. Leavis. Hello, Amy. Leavis How are you doing? Me. There he is. Uh, we were just playing contact list roulette, and uh, your name came up, and we decided to give you a call. However, voicemail. Unless, unless this isn't your phone anymore. I mean, I don't think I've called you since 1991. So, uh, did you have a cell phone then? She did. It was one of those big ones. Oh, it was the big ones. Yeah. That oh. you had to. It was thicker. <laughs> it was definitely thicker. It was thicker. Well, you needed a car to charge it. Either way you look at it, uh, one way or another, you can look at it as you're on the show. Yes, or right. at least your voicemail is. And you are now known as Florida Amy. So this could happen again. Mm-hmm. It's it's all chance. So it's roulette. So yeah, there you go. That's all I got. Bye. I love you, Florida Amy. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> all right. Well, <clears throat> Florida Amy is uh, now part of the show. Yes, she is. So we'll have to uh, get a segment with her. Contact list roulette is not always successful. I I was gonna say. See, okay, listeners, so here's the thing. Uh, J-Dog and I went to the same high school, which I think we've described. So I actually do know Florida Amy. I had a couple classes with her. Hmm. So um, I, I don't remember if I had any classes with her or not. All I know is I took her to prom. We, we go and way you back. you didn't. <laughs> that is so I'm just saying. Very, very true. I mean, so. this was this was a girl that was highly sought after. Everybody. Oh, yeah. Everybody wanted this girl to well, go to prom. <sighs> But we that. couldn't get through you. And uh, here I am. I pull up in the 1986 Chrysler of the Baron. <laughs> How's she going to turn that down? Two door, no less. I mean, this wasn't a family car. Did that have the rag top? Uh, no. Okay. No, it was a hard top. Did the windows go down? Well, the windows went down. Oh, but not yeah. on her side because I didn't want her to get out after I picked her up. <laughs> so Make sure the child lock was on. And, uh, and I'll tell you, I, I went to four proms in high school. Okay. I went to three at my school. And I went to one from another school. All right, I'm, I'm just the prom king here. Apparently, well, in my well, own in, in my own you, thoughts, I'm you the prom king. You were in high school for nine years, so yeah, it's it's slightly below average. So it's not like I, I went guess. every year. I'm yeah. not an idiot. <laughs> so I went to two at my school with a girlfriend. I went to one at another school with a girlfriend, and then I went with Florida Amy as friends. Mm. And it was the funnest prom out of all of them. I had no responsibilities other than to make sure she got home. Yeah. yeah. And, in the uh, LeBaron. And she got home to my home. I don't know if she ever made it to her home that yeah, night. Well. I don't remember. Either. But, but. Uh, Did you let her out of the time. trunk? No. Oh. She, actually, she was in there. And I believe there was uh, Mike and, uh, and uh, Matt. Uh, Matt D. was there. Okay. 
uh, I'm trying to remember who all came back to the house, and my mom had pancakes ready for everybody at like three in the morning. Oh, oh it was fantastic. But uh, I don't Thoughtful. think she came out of the trunk till like nine a.m. Probably not. When we kind of went out there, we forgot she was in there. It so. takes a while to get the duct tape off. So, um, but if I remember right, uh, Mike went out there. Mike T mm-hmm. went out there, and I think he was actually pushing pancakes through the keyhole, <laughs> trying to feed her. He so, was always thoughtful. Like he was that. a very thoughtful guy. Mm-hmm. I really appreciated that. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, Matt F was also there. No kidding. Yes, Matt F was there. You had all the A game players at your they at your did. house. That was a hot hopping night, I'm telling you. Wow! And the uh, Chrysler 86 LeBaron never shined so bright. It just <laughs> that was a beautiful night. So, Florida Amy, I'm glad I'm glad that we actually got to put our voices on your phone, but I'm very sorry that we missed you. Yes. Contactless roulette, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! New yep. segment. First Yay. round. Yay. First round. What will it be next round of contactless roulette? <laughs> I'm not even going to find a, a song. I'm just going to have you do that. That's perfect. Oh, that's perfect. So let me see. When when J Dog and I dream about you know where the show is going to go, the, the, we were talking about it. Oh, just keep going. We were talking about how uh, it sure would be nice uh, to have the time, energy, and resources to add like all these little bumpers for our yeah. our stuff. Well, here's another bumper for you. Okay. The girl from Ipanema! I, I specifically like the uh, the elevator version without lyrics, though. Well, I kind of... I'm kind of picky like that. I, I, I just wanted to play the song because you're drinking cherry whiskey. <laughs> and it's kind of fitting. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hey, hang on. Give me just a second. The girl from Ipanema, for whatever reason, is one of my favorites because a long time ago, <laughs> not only is it in every elevator, but there's this version of it where um, they somebody typed it into the computer and then had the computer read it. Ah, so like it sounds Microsoft synthesizer voice. Yeah, so it sounds, but then played the music back behind it, so it just sounds absolutely Hold terrible. On, why don't you just fantastic sip on that a little bit there? I, I think I will. This is like a little vacation. Oh, just enjoy this room. I don't know where Ipanema is, but I'll I'm, tell you what, I'm man, loving it. I'm in this elevator with Levis right now, and I hope we're going to the hundredth floor. <laughs> and then back and down. And back down. <laughs> Uh, you want elevator music? I got elevator music right here on the J Dog uh, and David Show. All you want. I missed my calling. I should have gone into elevator music. You probably should have. I do have uh, one more thing to play for you. It's it's carted up here. Um, earlier this week, I don't remember how many podcasts ago it was. Uh, maybe seven or so. I played you a prank phone call. Yes. That mm-hmm. we received at my full time job from a company, yes, selling oh, security. No. Uh huh. I believe it was Alliance Security. Okay. You know what? Um, you never heard from them again. They didn't lose my number. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks ago, when you, when you berated, is that the correct word? I don't think so. Berated, berated, berated. Yeah. When you broke into the <laughs> J-Dog and Asian Matt show. Oh, yes. Uh, did I derail? <laughs> you derailed. <laughs> we, did, we did some uh, Celebrity Uber. Yes, I, I did listen to Celebrity Uber. And we had Uber. Arnold Schwarzenegger, and we had another close friend, mm-hmm. Saul Rosenberg. Okay. Just so happens he was sitting next to me when Alliance Security called the other day. No kidding. What are the chances? What are the chances? <laughs> so I turned over and I said, Saul? Mm-hmm. And he said, Yes. I said, Saul, can you answer that phone for me? What do you think he said? Of course I will, (laughs) J-Dog. So let me play that for you because we we had recorded at the same time. Uh, This is Saul Rosenberg. Let Let me point this out, too. The gentleman that was trying to sell him the security system really held his own through this whole call. Oh, okay. Normally, Saul gets hung up on immediately. Really? Take a listen to this. Hard to believe. Hello? Hi, this is Isaiah with Alliance Security. How are you today? 
Oh, I'm fine, Isaiah. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thanks so much for asking. Now, I am calling about a promotion that we're currently running here in the area. Ooh. And a we're running this promotion, promotion for two simple reasons. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, this promotion just entails getting homeowners like yourself protected before something happens, as well as getting Protect, um, protected from advertisement. Excuse me, protected from what? <laughs> um, we protect against fires, home invasions, and medical emergencies. Home first. invasions? Oh, my Lord. Is there somebody in my area being home invaded? Well, that's why we're trying to get homes protected before something like this occurs. I mean, is there is there a record of somebody being invaded in my neighborhood? Is that why you're calling? Well, there's 8,000 home invasions reported 8, every 8,000? 8,000 and where? Where is this where? happening? <laughs> that's a sweat hog. And there's uh, 86 <laughs> fires reported every 86 seconds here in the United States. That's that's so, one a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's a That's, pretty yeah, quick math there, about Saul. One every second uh, minute and a half. <clears throat> second minute and a half. I'm okay. So you're calling me because there's eight thousand home invasions and ninety six fires. Um, not ninety six fires, but there's a fire won't break. reported no, every eighty six seconds right here in the United States. Now, what about like? And there's over. What What about the murder rates and the rape rates? <laughs> I'm not. Well, we're not really, um... I mean, what are you protecting me against? Is it just a fire? <laughs> fire, home invasion, medical emergency, sir. So not... If somebody wanted to take a baseball bat wrapped in salami and knock it upside my head, you wouldn't protect me from that. <laughs> Actually, we would protect you from right inside of really? your... Really? You see, right there is when I knew this guy was not going to break. I... <laughs> not me. Saul. Yes. <laughs> Said I'm going to wrap a baseball bat in salami and, and, and wrap it up my side. He didn't. He said, "No, we will protect you yeah, from that." He, he took they, it in stride. Alliance Security is going to protect me from a man wrapping salami around a baseball bat <laughs> and hit me upside the head. Oh my lord! Your home, sir, or if someone were to tr- come and try to break into your house to steal any of your valuables as well, I I got lots of valuables. I got lots of valuables. I have I have diamond necklaces. I have uh, ginkgo biloba. I have lots of things that are very valuable to me. So I would like to keep them protected. If you could do that for me, because I don't want eight thousand people coming to my house and starting ninety six fires. I'll tell you that right now. I'm a little fire engine red mad about this whole damn thing. To tell you the truth. So what can you do for me? Oh. Absolutely. And I would love to explain it to you as well, sir. Absolutely. No. Absolutely. And I would like to explain it to you as well. <laughs> Are you serious? This guy this guy is my hero. It makes you wonder who else he has already talked to that it, makes Saul <laughs> sound normal. If you're, if you're running a call center, this is your top-notch guy. <laughs> This guy will not break. Just to verify, you are the homeowner, correct? Of course I'm the homeowner. I answered the damn phone. (laughs) I'm by myself. It's very scary being here alone, I'll tell you. It's a big house. I used to have a wife and seven children. I raised seven children in this house, and now they're gone. And it's kind of like an empty nest, but my wife is gone too, so it's it's an empty nest times two. So I'm very lonely here, and and protection would be good. I need protection. (laughs) Absolutely, sir. Uh, Absolutely. Verify, Absolutely. Though, if we have a technician available in your area, do you mind verifying the five-digit zip code? Oh, sure. I'm in six. Well, we don't want to give away the zip code now, do oh, we? Oh, he- heavens no. Excellent, sir. And it looks like we do have availability right there in the area. Oh, and, um, fantastic. Um, That's going to make me feel better. I was going to make myself a bologna sandwich, but now you got me all flustered and I kind of lost my appetite. But if there's a technician available, I'll probably have that bologna sandwich and a slice of apple pie. <laughs> yes, absolutely, sir. Now, once again, my name is Isaiah. And just in case we get disconnected, oh, you can always Isaiah. reach me at 925 925-298-4683, correct? Absolutely, sir. 925-298-4753. 6111-6111-925-298. Am I... Did yeah. I, did I, get I wasn't right? even close. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Excellent. 
So let me just take a minute to tell you a little bit about our company, and then I can review everything that's included in the promotion. Oh, God, please do. Good? Please do. Hurry up. I, 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 I don't have a lot of time, but I'm, I want to squeeze you in here because I, this is very important to me. Absolutely. Now, Alliance has been serving customers for over... One way or another, I have got to meet this guy. <laughs> if we could get him on the show. Well, we know his phone number. We do have the phone number to call him back. Yeah. Okay. And over in India, it it's probably, you know, the middle of his day. <laughs> I'm thinking it's Carpentersville, Illinois. We have our monitoring station designated in Monotronics. It's actually located in... Monotronics? That sounds very technical. It sounds like either. one technical thing. Uh, yes, it does. We do have one of the fastest response times in the industry. We only employ certified and background check technicians. Oh, now, good, good. We do this because we want to make sure that they're just as committed to your safety as we are. Oh, they better be. If I'm going to pay you guys money, I want someone on my doorstep with a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah. Not only yeah. 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 <laughs> there you go. the integrity of your system, nor the quality of your service, even though we provide you all the base equipment at no cost. And he knows exactly what's going on, but in his mind he's thinking, I'm not getting written up. System, I'm moving forward. Right, here, right. Two right. years in a row. Two so years in a row. <clears throat> Absolutely. So how long have you been with the company, young man? <laughs> no, I've only been with this company for about two months now. Would you, let me ask you a question. This is something. When people try to sell me something on the phone, I like to ask this question because it tells me right away the yeses and the noes that I need to know. And what it is is if you were to invest in a company like in the stock market or you were to take some money out of your account and give it to someone, would you invest in your own company? I would. And tell me why you would invest in your company. That will let me know if the yeses or noes if I want to continue this call. I, so I don't it, believe him because that was the only time he didn't say absolutely. You are absolutely right. <laughs> See? Mm -hmm. At this point, though, <clears throat> the the call has turned against him, and it's putting him on the spot, <laughs> something he's not used to. He's just used to reading a script mm -hmm. and going through, and now he's being presented with, tell me why to invest in your company. Listen. Listen to what Isaiah does. Because if you believe in it and you're an employee, then I believe in it. But you've got to sell me on that before you go on with this conversation. Why would you invest in your company? It's ADT, right? <laughs> no, no, it's not ADT. No, it's actually Alliance Security. Wait, who's lying? I think uh, you're lying. This is ADT Security Services. <laughs> Hello? Hello? So why would you invest in your company? Well, because we are a small company and we are growing as well. And we have uh, skyrocketed throughout the years. Now, with that being said, we actually are um, number one in customer satisfaction and service. And um, we just want to make sure that homes are getting protected more than actually even making a profit. So what you're saying is you want to not invest bad. in yeah. the customer actually. and not just the profits. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. How the hell are you going to make any money? Well, because investing in the customer and giving them a great deal on an updated system, as well as making sure that they're satisfied. But just so you know, Saul can read through the BS. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a bad recovery, though. Yeah. All facts considering, he can read through it. And as well as definitely going to help us grow. And as well company. as making and sure you make lots of money. Stuff. You're not in this just Absolutely to be to be nice. Now I really think you're lying to me. I don't know if I can continue this call anymore. I'm very frustrated. All right, sir. I just want to know. I just want you to know that it's nothing. Again. Hello. <laughs> oh, I think he disconnected. And we lost him. Ah. Oh dear. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, at that point, Saul had to end the call because he would have kept going. Oh, he was mm -hmm. going to sell that product mm -hmm. to Saul Rosenberg. <laughs> He'd have found a way. I was wondering who hung up. So, because it didn't sound like he was ready to. Oh yeah, so. I, I had said I can't continue the call. I mean, Saul said, "Yes, I can't continue the call." And and he left. He said, "Okay, sir," and mm -hmm. and he moved on. He got his out. But I was very impressed. Held his own, mm -hmm. and uh, Saul went after him. I, Isaiah, yeah. salami wrapped baseball bat and all. <laughs> 
Oh, but these, uh, Isaiah's your boy if you're running a call center. They, I'm with you on that one. They will not stop calling, and we will not stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> so please, Alliance Security, feel free to call anytime. Uh, there's plenty of celebrities that would love to talk to you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, here we are, man. Here we are, right was, up to an hour on the show. I was just thinking this uh, guitar is calling my name. Ten string gilly being lifted by my six fingers, going right into Levis's lap. Boy, am I jealous, jealous fellas. <clears throat> and you know what? You know what? I haven't done all night. Uh. I haven't given you a floop. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the floop, J Dog. One I, more floop. There you sweet, go. Sweet, sweet, sweet floop. That uh, Video Onyx Boing box sits on my desk <laughs> all week long for that. You sure it's not a monotronic? <laughs> for two floops of monotronics. <laughs> a color paneled monotronics board, nonetheless. I believe that's what I get with my system. Ooh. Alliance Security. Ladies and gentlemen, this is podcast number 22 of the J Dog and Leva Show. I'd like to thank Florida Amy for joining the show tonight. <laughs> Involuntarily. Thank you very much for coming on. Asian Matt, can't thank you enough for the past two weeks filling in, co hosting. Welcome back to the studio anytime. Except when I'm here. Except when Leva's is no, here. No, it's not true. But you will have to sit in the, the third seat. Yeah. With your own chopsticks. Leave, Leave mine alone. alone. Before Leva sat down tonight, he put a couple of drops of super glue on the seat, <laughs> sat down and nestled in. He's not going anywhere. He's not losing that 1972 corduroy yellow again. It's mine. I'm Velcroed to it. You probably could Velcro yourself to it, to tell you the I, truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So thank you, HMA, for co-hosting. Come back anytime. The next time you come back, Uber celebrity drivers, two brand new celebrities, will be driving you around when we get that. Podcast number 22 here on August 4th, 2016. We started this venture back in February, and we're still going. It's been like... I can't believe I'm not sick of you yet. Six months. It really has. Right around six months, yeah. And not only am I not sick of you, I actually kind of missed you. (laughs) It's part part of my tactics. That's what it is. Not only that, but the (laughs) cherry whiskey is talking at about an 80% level in my brain right now. Fair so enough. 20% of what I'm about to say is coming out of my brain. Out of your heart. But, oh, out of your brain. But yes. the cherry wine brain, which is now 80% of my brain, is taking over the... Ladies and gentlemen, yes. thank you very much. For, <laughs> <laughs> you talk about technical difficulties. j Dog and Levis Podcast here on www.spreaker.com is where we host all our podcasts. If you're listening, you're probably already here. You know what I like about uh, North Brown Studios is that there's a cot here for you. That's correct. You have a place to sleep. I mean, I I can lay down and snooze and wake up in the morning and head on home. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it is very nice. And it is a full-size cot, which is probably two feet wide instead of one, so we can both fit. Ooh. Plenty of room. Is it a sleep number? Plenty of room if you stack. <laughs> side by side, it'd be a little tight. I don't I don't stack, I only pack. <laughs> I mean pick. Pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, professional fudge picker. <laughs> Leave us, ladies and gentlemen. Let me throw this out there again. Last week on podcast number 21, I pretty much begged you all to email us. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. I heard the begging. I mean, 10,000 spam emails, you know, from producers and radio shows. Oh, well, yeah. I just want to hear from Who listeners. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what I want to hear from. So please email us at jdogandlevis at gmail.com. That's J D A W G A N D L E E V I S. jdogandlevis at gmail.com. Just email us and tell us you hate us. <laughs> because as my, or good, not. as my good friend Donald Trump. Should I say good friend? As my good friend Donald Trump says, all publicity is good publicity. Mm. Yes, he truly believes that and believes it's going to get him through this hill uh, that he has to get through. So please, bad, good, give us an email. Let us know what you think of the show. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Let us know what you want to leave us to play. That's true. I, I mean, do take uh, requests. Good friend uh, EPC Ricky. Mm-hmm. Actually sent in a request. He got his song. It's true. And he was very happy with it. Listened to it with his wife. And uh, I believe they made love that night. I suspect so. 
Actually, I think it was before they heard the song. And then I think after they heard the song, she said no more of that. But it doesn't but matter. It was all in the same evening. She wasn't referring to the song at that no, point. No, no, not at all. Ricky's performance. <laughs> yeah. Not yours. He Your performance is, <laughs> is gut-wrenching. <laughs> Ricky should listen to the show more often, I think. I think he listens to every single one. Really? Yes, he does. I believe he does. His kids are getting older now, though, so he's got to be careful. Got to oh, be careful. Man. When he, yeah. A lot of fudge-picking going on in the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you can also reach us on iTunes. You can reach us on Blueberry.com, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. You can reach us on YouTube. YouTube, everybody goes to YouTube. Go to YouTube, type in J-Dog and leave us. When you get to that page, there's a little button there. It's a red button that says subscribe. Ah. If you click on that, what's going to happen is every time we fart, belch, sneeze, you'll know about it. Because it's going to come right to your phone, to your computer, to your YouTube account, and it's going to tell you what we're doing. So subscribe. If you do go to the Spreaker.com, easy for me to say, Jerry Whiskey, <laughs> www.spreaker.com forward slash JDog and leave us. If you listen to us there, and that's the link you're clicking on, or if you're clicking on our Facebook page and you get to the Spreaker.com website, there's a button that says follow. Click on follow. You will also know every time we make a move, it'll come to your phone. It'll let you know when new songs are coming up. It'll let you know when new shows are coming up. It'll let you know when promos are coming up. It'll let you know when hosts are coming up. It'll let you know when hosts are coming yeah, up. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, hosts don't show up. It'll let you know when Florida Amy's going to actually answer the damn phone. <laughs> so feel free to follow us there. Subscribe on YouTube. You can go to iTunes iTunes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the premier podcast site. iTunes, type in J Dog and Leavis. There we are. Bam! 22 podcasts at your fingertips. <laughs> All 10 of them. <laughs> All 10 of those little greasy, grubby, calloused up fingertips. And they pretty much get two podcasts per tip. That just reminded me of the They Might Be Giant song called Fingertips. Oh. What a fantastic moment. <laughs> so please. Tune into any of those and listen to the show wherever you feel free. If you go to Google and you type in J Dog and Leave Us, there's like 20 different things on there now. No kidding. We are Google. We, we, we're Googly. <laughs> we have been Googleized. <laughs> and uh, check it out. Facebook all the time. Go to Facebook. Type in J Dog and Leave Us. Go to our Facebook page. Uh, I think facebook.com forward slash J Dog and Leave Us. You can get there. Uh, we may be talking more and more about a live show coming up. You keep after twenty two podcasts, I think we could probably pull one off. It's possible. And that would be a huge event. Huge. And if you comment on the show enough, it may give us some inspiration to get that going. Because the fun thing about the live broadcast is you can actually chat and call into the show. Ah. If you got the secret number. Ah. Mm-hmm. Or you might be a victim of contact list roulette. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll leave another voicemail. So Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to podcast number 22. Levis is back, and he will be here for a while because he only gets four days vacation a year. It's true. That is true. Have you wonder what and that, even, but, uh, the, even less but, than that from get, the show. But, get, <laughs> hold on. I have one sip of whiskey left. And it's gone. But I'm going to drink more in post-production. This ought to be a lot of fun. <laughs> show's probably going to be really messed up by the time I'm done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Podcast number 22, August 4, 2016. j Dog and leave us on Spreaker.com. We'll see you next week for Podcast 23. Crazy, crazy crap coming your way. And hookers. Good night.